Oh, you need to hit it up. 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 Oh, you need AEMT video lecture series. Mike Morris here with you for another great episode. It's going to be a long one. Grab you a cup of coffee. Uh, sit back, relax. You know, you can pause me when you get bored because um, there's a lot to this chapter, of course. Um, hope everybody's well. I apologize. I wanted to get more videos up, but you know, I done a couple of videos didn't have sound with those videos i'm hoping that i've worked all the bugs out and that maybe we can get this posted um i will let you know as soon as i know something about when we will get all the kinks worked out and get to actually doing skills and meeting up and etc but um <clears throat> use this time to get yourself familiar with the material and understand it um there is a lot to this like again there's a lot to this chapter but don't worry we're gonna we're gonna get you through it okay so just relax and let the information in let it settle and you'll do fine so let's start here um this will be our third video of the series of this chapter i'm gonna go until i you know feel like that um you know, it's a good stopping point for the next video, etc. But we're going to start with organ systems. And we've talked about this a little bit before. We said that um, cells make tissue, tissues make organs, and organs make organ systems. Um, the, um, an organ's composed of at least two kinds of tissue, right? Organized to perform a complex task and remember that's decided <clears throat> excuse me in the cell uh, because uh, they're, they're going to get like a uh, they're going to get a specialty job they're either going to be skin cells heart cells muscle cells etc so um, different types of cells and let's look at some of the systems we have here all right so some of the organ systems. Let's see if I can get my pen to work. All right, we have the nervous system, and the nervous system, right? That's gonna. That's um, basically the signal person, uh, part of the brain that signals um, the blood vessels to constrict, the blood vessels to dilate. It sends uh, information uh, from um, uh, from the brain to the body. And then it receives information, right? It receives information. So, you know, like chemoreceptors and, you know, it, it takes that information and processes it and comes up with a plan. We have the respiratory system. The respiratory system, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's responsible for getting oxygen from the atmosphere, right? Sending it down eventually to the alveoli gas exchange, and then getting rid of that CO2 is extremely important. Um, we're going to talk more about the respiratory system later in this chapter and how it affects acid base. The urinary system, another organ system that um, is going to be important in acid base as well, but um, it's rid of waste. And um, I, you, know, you may have remembered in school you would say, okay, uh, you know, give me an organ system that uh, gets rid of waste. And everybody generally goes to the digestive system um, because it does get rid of waste. But, you know, there's other systems out there that gets rid of waste. And the urinary system is one of them. Now on to the digestive system. Um, just a brief overview on all of these. But the digestive system responsible for one, you know, getting nutrients. Um, uh, getting the nutrients out of the food and getting it to a point that it can be used by the cell and also gets rid of waste. Reproductive system, we wouldn't be here without it, right? 
the endocrine system. All right, so this is a complex uh, organ system that secretes hormones, right, and chemical messages. Um, so, and then we have the immune system, and we know that's a big topic of discussion nowadays, right? Um, so, immune system, it's gonna, you know, fight this these enemies, and um, you know, we talked about um, the the immune system doing that, but so does the integumentary system, your skin, the largest organ system that we have. It also helps to fight infection. You know, your skin has a pH level, and um, that, and we're going to learn more about that too, right? And that pH level, though, when a bacteria is very susceptible to to pH, it's very susceptible to temperature, and a lot of times when that bacteria lands on the skin the skin's ph will kill that bacteria before you so that's that's the reason why you know if you have open cuts uh, and that sort of thing that that just allows that bacteria then to bypass that and go straight in um, but if you don't have any open cuts and you, you you know something lands on your skin hey it's a good infection fighter then we have the muscular and skeleton system right so the muscular part of that handles the contractions uh, you know handles the the muscle movement and also you know the heart being a being the, you know one of the most important muscles there too um helps to circulate blood but we're talking about contraction type stuff and then the skeletal system is the framework for all of this and its job of course is to protect the organ system and then you can look over here and hear where that word again is homeostasis right and you know homeostasis is it just keeps everything in check it keeps everything running the way it should like a fine machine everything runs well and that's the job job number one of the cell the cell's job is to keep uh homeostasis that's that's the job and so in order to keep homeostasis we have to get we have to get o2 in we have to get co2 out we have to maintain a good ph uh, a good temperature, all right? All of that stuff's very important. And then, you know, the circulatory system down here on the bottom, you know, and that's just that, you know, it's it's responsible for transporting, you know, O2 and getting that to the cells and getting CO2 out of the cells and, you know, then, you know, to the resp ultimately to the respiratory system to have that exhaled. So that's just like a brief overview of the organ systems. All right, and this just talks about what we just talked about, um, the skeletal system, right? So remember um, what's involved there. So the bones are involved there, right? Uh, the ligaments. So um, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments, you know, they're an important uh, piece of that, and they're, uh, and they're connective tissues. Um, they just, you know, its job is to support the skeletal system. Um, remember that a tendon is a specialized tough cord. It's dense, white connective tissue, right? And it connects muscle to bone. Tendons connect muscle to bone. And then you have ligaments, right? What do ligaments do? All right, again, another tough white band of tissue that connects bones to each other so bone to bone still gotta remember that for the test um you know i know it's easy to forget or confused on um and then that another type of connective tissue and we're just talking about tissue connective tissue is just a type of tissue right but um it's that cartilage right and its job it's to um it's found in the joints. <clears throat> Excuse me. Its job is support to support the um, to support the skeletal system uh, as you know, like a cushion. And so that that's that. Let's keep going. All right. So when we talk about bones, okay. So we have long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, right? But they're all. Um, classified according to their shape this will be important to remember you'll probably see this again um, because you know we're going to be doing IOs 
Um, so um, we're we're going to have to know the anatomy of the bone, right? And so long bones can uh, consist of a shaft um, known as a diaphysis. The ends are the up here. The ends. Sorry, maybe I should point at that. Okay, these are your ends, right? Your um, epiphysis. I think so. I just, I don't know. Say it correctly. I probably probably jacked that up, but I think that's how it's pronounced. And then the diaph the diaphysis. Okay, and that's you know that's inside there is that medullar cavity. That marrow cavity, and that's where that IO is going to hopefully get into, right? When we when we get to that, then there's two types of bone, right? There's compact bone, all right. You know that's you know that's that solid bone, and then there's can uh, cancellous bone, and that's you know um, they call it like the I think the late the lacy network of bones. It's uh, you know, it's not hardcore, it's not strong bone. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Now that you're bored good enough, I, I don't know about you, but I hate joints. <laughs> I, I hate teaching them. I hate learning about them. I, I don't know. I, I just can't stand it that there's so many different types of joints. I, I just, oh, it drives me crazy. You know, but here they are. And I like the, I just, the definitions, what I think is just really important on this is where whenever two long bones come into contact, um, they, and those two long bones, they form an articulation, right? And that's, that's what your joint is, right? It consists of those ends of the bones. All right. I'm not going to go into that. We went into that in EMT school and I hate it anyway. Um, and you know, I hope there's not a lot on the registry test about joints for AEMT um, because I uh, can't stand them. Can't stand them. All right. Um, then we got the skeleton system, right? And it's broken into two different parts. You have the axle skeleton, and that's just, you know, that's going to be your head, your thoracic cavity, your vertebral column, and then the appendicular skeleton. Um, I think appendages, and that's when you, you know, that's part of your arms, your legs, right? Their connective points and the pelvis. And I would know that because I could see them asking a question about that. Just to confuse you, you know, um, you arrive on the scene of a blah, blah, and part of the axle skeleton is this or that, please identify, more, you know, and they're going to want you to know, oh, it's the skull. Oh, it's a thoracic cage. Oh, it's a vertebral column. That sort of thing. <clears throat> All right, so then we come up here to the skull. They're not going to waste a lot of your time on this. Again, this is, a lot of this is repeat, but I'm just I'm trying to get us back into, into the game. You know, this is when the game kind of starts, chapters one through six. Well, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, one through six. Yeah, that's just, that's just, oh, God, that's boring stuff, you know? It just is. It's, it's oh, you know, and one through six, really, you've already had an EMT school. Um, <clears throat> so it's just like, you know, just some stuff we tell, we have to teach, honestly. Um, and um, so one through six, you know, that, that might be a question or two coming out of that on the registry, but seven is where it starts. Seven's where you start getting the meat and the potatoes. Um, you know, so this part maybe not so much meat and potatoes, but when we talk about acid base, um, you've already gotten a little bit of meat and potatoes from the cell. You didn't get any of that in EMT school. So yeah, a lot of that's gonna be a lot different. Um, the skull, twenty-eight bones. All right. I'll let you look at that. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot there, but they did throw something in there, the auditory ossicles, right? I mean, I don't know why the book, out of everything, <laughs> if it, out of everything in there, they picked that to, to focus on. Um, but, you know, it's it's part of your ear. It's part of your... Um, um, 
I don't know, it's part of your skull. I guess the word I'm trying to come up with is a temporal bone. Um, so yeah. That's just just what it is. Um, I want to show you this though. Because I'm <clears throat> some of you guys that went to my EMT class you already know this stuff. I mean, you had a really good AMP review. I probably taught you more than you needed to know. Uh, but now is where where you're probably saying, man, I'm kind of glad I dealt with him. He was such a blah, blah. But, you know, <clears throat> this crib plate form right here, right? And so this is where where the danger is. This is how, how when you have a closed head injury, um, you can have a bleed. From the bottom of this, All right? So, crib plate form. It's sharp. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lots of things can. Lots of little sharp bony pieces in there that can that can cause a bleed. Nothing new with that. Bones of the orbit. And you you've had that information. Um, you've already passed your EMT class. Um, I would review this. I wouldn't know. This stuff, I would know the ethmoid, right? Because they're gonna they're gonna ask a question about the ethmoid because it's the ethmoid, you know, and it's you know you don't talk about it every day, and it's easy to confuse with something else like the spinoid. So I would know that stuff um, just in the back of your head, so that in case you need to recall it, you can recall it. Um. I'm, I'm just cruising, guys, because I'm not going to bore you with stuff that you already know. It's not going to do it to you. We'll cover, we, we'll review gas exchange. We'll review that stuff that gave gave y'all fits in EMT school. Um, but, you know, some a lot of the stuff is just, just reading it, kind of knowing the definitions and re-familiarizing yourself. What do we need to know for the test? Mm -hmm. I know that's what you're saying, right? We'll do a review. We'll do a review. <clears throat> I want you in this lecture to, I really want you to absorb it. That's all. Because you're hearing this again, right? And when you're on the, when you're in registry and you're sitting there taking the exam and you have that gut feeling that it's B, you don't know exactly why it's B, but you've heard it. That's your brain screaming at you. You've, I know it's B because of that that boring ass lecture that he did during the pandemic. I heard it then. then and, and that's why you will have that feeling. But you don't get that unless you're just absorbing this stuff through. The skeletal system physiology part of this. All right, so we've talked about it a second ago, but protection, protection, protection. Bones protect internal organs. All right, they consist of collagen, minerals. All right, they're also responsible for uh, the bones pro, uh, for producing calcium. Another big deal there. So yeah, producing calcium and protection. That's that's the important thing. Then we go to the muscles. Okay, um, remember there are different types, right? There's smooth muscle cardiac muscle right and so cardiac muscle you know that's that's your heart functions within obviously within the cardiovascular system smooth muscle find that in your lungs right remember that and then you have skeletal muscle so skeletal muscle obviously deals with your skeletal movement Okay, yeah, we need to cover this, I think. Just because your book made this so crazy. Made it so, so crazy. So we are going to cover this. We are, we are, we are. All right, hang on one second. I'm going to pause you for a second because I need to move away from this PowerPoint and bring up, uh, just bring up a, a screen that I can write on. So hang on one second. Okay, I'm back. All right, so let's talk about this, and let's 
Let's look at this. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so when we talk about muscles, right? <clears throat> so muscles get their energy from ATP. And we talked about ATP and how it how it works when we talked about um 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 what's the word I'm looking for when we talked about um cellular stuff and we talked about that you know like the first or second video but anyway we talked about ATP so let me get a pin up here real quick pin. whoops in this pen all right me in the pen all right so we have atp oh man that was ugly that was ugly Or ATP. So what's it good for? It's your main source of energy. Problem is, it's short term. It's a short term deal. So ATP is going to provide you energy for your muscles when you're running, when you're working out, when whatever you're doing. Um, but it's short term. ATP must be able to regenerate. Okay, it has to be able to regenerate. Otherwise, you're not going to have muscle movement. Okay. You know what? Let me, I'm going to teach this backwards. Hang on one second. I'm going to teach this backwards because I think it's, it's easier. It's going to be easier to understand if I do this a little different. All right, so remember everything I just said there. All right, so let's let's talk about muscle fatigue first. Muscle fatigue. Okay, so why this is important? is let's say you have somebody is in severe respiratory distress they are knocking <clears throat> knocking on um respiratory failures door they're knocking on it right so meaning they're not there yet they're not they're not in failure you're not going to be bagging them yet but you've seen enough of these patients and you know what they look like right and and you and you know if I don't get on, if I don't get on my horse and start riding hard, this person is going to, they're going to be in failure. And this is the person who looks at you and goes, I'm just too tired to keep going. Right? They're at muscle fatigue, right? Because those, those, um, those respiratory muscles in the rib cage, uh, accessory muscle use, it is on its way i mean it's been working and working and working and it's and it's out so what's the definition of this so it's when it's when energy supply okay to the muscles I like the word they used. Yeah, I like the I like the word they used here. In adequate. God, I hate that word. You're inadequate. Inadequate though. To, you know, it's inadequate to what? To meet the energy demand. Okay. 
And why is this? So why? Why are we there? Why are we here? So we have our cell here, right? <clears throat> and we need oxygen to be in this cell so that when glucose comes in to the cell, right, we get that pyruvic acid. Okay. And then from pyruvic acid, we know. We know this how this works, right? We're going to get some water. All right? And that water is going to be used in the blood. Because what is blood? It's 95% water. Okay? Got that. We're going to get some heat. Okay, what's that heat going to be used for? A lot, really. It's going to be used for a lot, but uh, to save a bunch of physiology, let's just, let's just say body temp. I'm just going to abbreviate like that. Right? But then what do we get? You know what we get, right? We talked about it. We're going to get some ATP out of this deal. Yeah. We're getting some energy. We're going to get that energy. Right? Well, that's when, when we're in respiratory distress. We're not getting that, are we? Because when we're in distress, oxygen's missing. We're going to get the glucose. We're going to get pyruvic. Sorry, guys. That is a U. Pyruvic acid that's going to turn into what? What? Say it. Lactic acid. Right? Because it's anaerobic. That's where we're at, right? We're not getting, whoa, man, sorry. We're not getting that, oh, man, oh, there we go. We're not getting that energy that we need, right? So what is that energy? Now we're going to go back to the ATP. Now we're going back. So when I said, you know, ATP, All right, A T P. So we know we know that, right? You're like, I know that already. You start more, so I know you do. I know you do because you're smart. You're smart. Let's talk about it though. It's short term. It is. It's short term. It's like a burst. It gives you a burst of energy. It's like gas. You know, it gives you a quick. Gas, but if you mash that pedal to the floor, it's different than a car. It doesn't manage it very well. And you're going to be out really quick. So if you're going to be out really quick, what do we need? We must be able to regenerate it. Okay? We have to be able to regenerate ATP. And the body knows this. The body's like, yeah, I know. I can't make it quick enough. So what can I do? Okay, what can I do? Well, it's got this stuff called creatine phosphate. And, you know, people go to college for four years to understand this stuff, but I'm going to try to make it to where, you know, um, we can do it in 15 minutes. <laughs> But creatine phosphate, I need to understand it's not, um, it's not a direct supply of energy. Okay, it's not a direct supply of energy. So what is it? All right, so what is it? All right, so it's basically a gas. It's basically a tank. It's a reserve. It, it's it's um it stores energy. Let's just say that it stores energy. Okay, it stores energy. 
All right. And yes, it stores energy in the mitochondria, which is the what? Powerhouse of the cell. And that's why they call it that. Because it's the it's the storage area for this kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So next step, the next thing to understand. Okay. Are you guys with me? Are you bored out of your mind yet? Don't be bored out of your mind yet. Not yet. Hang with me. Okay. Stay with me. All right. So the next thing to understand. Is that um, ATP? It breaks down energy, meaning this is how it gets energy. This is ATP, right? All right, it gets energy one. Okay, it calls upon the creatine phosphate. It says, "Hey, I need some help." What do you need help with? I need some energy. Okay, I can help you out there. Okay. Creatine phosphate says, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm, I'm going to give you something that um, is like ATP, but not quite ATP. It's ADP. Okay. And ATP says, that's fine, because I'm going to take you... And you to make me. Okay. You know, with me on that. So creatine phosphate. Breaks. Um, it. It. Provides a process for ADP. And then ADP can change into ATP. All right. This is. Why do we need to know this? Because I want you. Next time you see somebody that's knocking on respiratory failures door. I want you to understand at the cell, okay, at the cell level, they're anaerobic. I want you to understand that they're not regenerating ATP. All right. I want you to understand that they're building up lactic acid. I want you to understand that in order for ATP to regenerate, there's a, or, come on, you know what, I'm going to rewrite the book. There's a <laughs> three-step process for that to happen. Okay? It takes a little bit of time. It's like building a house. And that's why I want you to see that. And so, well, okay, I see it. So what am I supposed to do with it? What that's going to eventually help you with is going to help you decide, am I going to go ahead and stay in play? Or am I going to load and go? And not load and go to, you know, talk an emergency to the hospital. Am I going to move this patient from the house to the ambulance? All right. Am I going to do that? So let's say you're, you're, you know, you're on the scene and the ambulance sitting there. Which, which, that's an easy, you know, we're just going to do what we do. But the ambulance gets there about three minutes after you get there. Now you have, you're, you're taking care of the patient. You are, you are in charge of the patient's care until you give a report over to, I don't care who it is, a medic, whatever. You you are laying the groundwork for how that patient's going to be treated. Um, and there's been many times that I've had to say, "Look, um, I know, yeah, and I'm nice about it. You know, I'm like, hey, look, I know you're the paramedic, and this is going to be your patient. But, dude, I'm way deep into this right now, and I just can't, I can't turn this patient over to you yet. I can't give you a report yet, but I will. I will. I'm doing this, that, and the other. Can you know how about helping me with this, that? whatever but i made that decision to stay i made that decision to let's this has got to be done now right this this has got to happen now and we don't have five minutes to go to the ambulance 
what realistically is probably longer than five minutes. I don't care if it's parked right there in the driveway. You still got to put the patient on the stretcher, which that's going to take energy, right? That you don't have, um, you know, stuff like that. So that's the stuff I want you to see. That is it. Yeah, and no, and there, there just isn't a slide for me to, you know, for me to uh, be able to do that with. So let me pause you real quick. We're going back to the slides. All right, we're back. <clears throat> so. Your book talks about that oxygen use and debt, and I've talked about it too, right? And that kind of goes going to go back to what I just showed you. When your patient's in anaerobic, right, because it says the oxygen is required for the breakdown of glucose, the glucose comes in, it doesn't find oxygen, we got a problem, right? So then that, if it makes a lactic acid, it ends up in the liver, and then the liver cells are required to convert lactic acid into glucose again. And so, <coughs> excuse me, so that's kind of where we're at there. Um, we already know what hemoglobin is. It's a pigment that makes the blood red. Myoglobin just makes your muscles look red, okay? We know hemoglobin is what's going to transport oxygen. All right, to the cells. And in your book used a crazy term, reverse binding. Don't get hung up on that. Reverse binding is just the uh, oxygen is going to the hemoglobin to bind instead of the hemoglobin coming to the oxygen. So don't worry about that. No big deal. Oh, well, here we are. We're at the respiratory system. All right. And so don't forget. Okay, what the upper airway is, right? And the nose, mouth, tongue, jaw, the actual oral cavity. It doesn't mention the nasal pharynx. It just mentions the pharynx and the larynx. All right. All right. All right, we know about the tongue and the problems it causes. Um, we know that the palate. Let me get us a pointer here. All right. <clears throat> Where are we at? The palate, right? So we know the palate right, forms a roof of the mouth, separates the oral pharynx and the nasopharynx. Here's your oral pharynx, nasopharynx, and you have the palate up here. I had a call one time. I had this kid whose palate, and she was running with a vacuum cleaner, uh, the long, the old, old school vacuum cleaners and the long pole part. And it, she fell with that thing in her mouth and it shoved up and it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Her whole palate was coming down and that was, you know, it wasn't bleeding or anything like that. But when you laid her back, the palate actually came down and blocked her airway. When she was setting up, her palate was fine and it was wicked and um, it was crazy. And so um, I ended up calling a trauma alert, going to Eggleston, and um, I'm sure she did fine. But all right, and then we have your larynx, okay, and that's typically the dividing line, right, between the upper and lower airway. Then we have the lower airway, all right. Remember, we got um, 
your um, trachea. We have the two bronchioles, left bronchial, right bronchioles, the bronchioli, the alveoli. That's responsible for gas exchange, right? <clears throat> so we know how this works. All right, we got we got oxygen up here. Let me get a pen. Oh, please don't get a pen. We're getting a pen. We're getting a pen. All right, we got O2 out here, right? It's coming in. Bam. Coming down. It's going to come down the bronchioles into the bronchioli down here to the alveoli, right? And those are sacs. And we know how that gas exchange works, right? O2 is coming out. CO2 is coming in. And we get rid of CO2 by breathing it out. Yep, that's how we work. Remember the plural? Or that plural space. All right. And it's a problem if, you know, we get penetration, like from a stabbing or GSW, right? Because we're going to bring air into those lungs until they collapse. That can be a problem then, right? And we got the visceral plural and the parietal plural. Okay. So the visceral plural is attached to the lungs. Now, oh, all right. I'm, I'm starting to get confused. Um, yeah, that's right. And then um, the visceral plural covers that external part to the chest wall. See? You might get confused. It's been a while too. Alright, and then we have muscles for breathing. All right? Um remember the diaphragm? All right, it's responsible for like 70% of breathing, All right? And that process of O2 leaving the alveoli. All right, so if this is an alveoli. And it's coming out. And if that's a blood cell. And it has CO2. That process is, you know, we do that through diffusion, right? And it doesn't cost anything. And there's your alveoli. There you're up here, you have, remember this? Do you guys remember this? All right, let's do this. Okay. All right, you got blood coming in through the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. And where's it coming into the right atrium, right? And this is deoxygenated blood. And then we're going down to the right ventricle, right? And then we're coming up through the pulmonary. Oh, I forgot this tricuspid valve right here, right? Try before you buy. Then we're coming up through the pulmonary trunk into the pulmonary arteries. And that's where diffusion happens, right? And then it's oxygenated blood. You're coming back through your pulmonary veins. There we go. All right. Into the left atrium, through the bicuspid valve, left ventricle, aortic valve. All right, and then out to the cells. And what are we toting? We're toting O2. 
Taking some O2. That's where the drop off happens down here. O2. Pick up that dirty CO2. And then back. The process continues. Yep, that's how it works. Important to know. And then you got the blood here. Let's talk about it. You got your plasma, which is mostly water, 95%. Right? And that's what totes the blood cells, right? It, if you didn't have plasma, plasma, you couldn't deliver your white blood cells, your red blood cells, and your platelets. And then we have the chemical tr control of, ble of ble bleeding. Lord, how long have we been going here? 45 minutes, that's not too bad. I'm going to stop at acid base, which is like the next slide, and then I'm going to do a separate video. All right, so um, remember the chemical control of breathing. What, what, what are they talking about? What are they talking about? Remember the chemoreceptors, right? And so, yeah, so these guys monitor what? Well, your central chemoreceptors monitor hydrogen. CO2, then you have your peripheral, and they're going to monitor O2, CO2, all right, remember that? And so if you're picking up a lot of CO2, then we're going to breathe faster to get rid of it, right? And that's all about the next slide. I think that's going to be acid base, and it is. And that's why we're going to stop. Because you guys need to take a break. I need to reorganize. And we will be back with the next video on acid base. See you in a few.